start with a couple of excuses, like, of course, my voice is dying and I'm just coming from the Blender conference and, of course, we are having three days of fun and everything is awesome. I, I love going to the conference, but it's exhausting as hell. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to do a, this presentation and then I have to run back again because I have meetings there and everything. Um, so, yeah, um, we can do some questions or whatever. Um, I did pretty much the same presentation yesterday at the Blender conference, although I guess I'll change it a little bit. Um, I probably don't have to do like an introduction to OpenXR. I guess everybody knows how it roughly works and everything, so I guess I can skip that. Um, I did want to do some demos. Unfortunately, I would have to set up a machine where I can actually mirror the VR view and everything, and my laptop doesn't allow me to do this. And also, Monado, unfortunately, doesn't run on my laptop um, because it's using the integrated uh, Intel uh, thingy, and I have to do it where well, Primus run or Opti run and everything. And, uh, there's a bug in Intel, which, I, as far as I know, Monado is uh, trying to get it to rest. Um, but, yeah. First off, I guess you're all aware what Blender is um, by now. Um, I think it's fair to say that everybody who's sort of doing stuff with computers regularly, and especially in the open source world, has heard about Blender, so I guess I don't have to do an introduction about that either. Um, are there any people using Blender regularly? Or, uh, is, yeah, every now and then or whatever, yeah, that's cool. Um, so I guess I can just, just jump right into it and don't have to give an Blender introduction, and I will skip this point then. Um, the big thing is I was doing a Google Sum of Code project for Blender, um, basically bringing OpenXR to it. Um, Joey wrote the abstract for my talk, which is on the schedule, and there's a little mistake in it, just a tiny little mistake, uh, and it says it's in master, which isn't the case, actually. <laughs> Um, we are preparing it for Blender 2.82, which is supposed to be released about around uh, January, February. Um, but yeah, and technically it's not even in there yet, so... But I'm pretty optimistic we can get it, in, get it in. And I learned to not be too optimistic with that kind of stuff, so... <laughs> then I'm going to talk a bit about the Blender XR team. Uh, this is a totally unofficial team, but there are a couple of really great artists and uh, developers and we're sort of trying to join forces and try to get a really decent experience into Blender. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do presentation now. Thank you, Joey. There you go. This is the first good thing you've ever done to me. <laughs> Everything else was just work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if you're wondering why I got into VR at all, it's all his fault. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm happy about that, though. <laughs> no, I enjoy doing it, actually. Um, OK, last point, we're going to do some um, overview on further work. Uh, I have some thoughts about how we want to develop uh, all the VR experiences for Blender and all the workflows for that. But I'm going to start with me. Um, I'm doing planner development for five and a half years now. Yeah, for around five and a half years. Um, I'm currently working at the Blender Institute in right here in Amsterdam, so in Amsterdam North. Um, doing that. I'm living here in Amsterdam since one month, about one month now. Um, I've worked for the foundation or for the institute now for two months, but I've always added various collaborations with the institute and always did contract, contract work with them and everything. Um, okay, that point makes sense on the Blender conference, not so much here. Um, if there's anybody using Blender, you've all seen and used my work, uh, it's pretty obvious stuff. Um, mainly because I focus on usability. Um, that is always sort of my, my uh, playing ground or <laughs> I have something that I take very serious, and I'm actually sort of the only UI developer, full-time UI developer working on Blender currently. Um, so that means I have lots of stuff on my plate. <laughs> um, and I only have so much time for the VR stuff. 
I'm currently trying to do it more like two days a week I spend on VR. But as I said, we are going to talk about the, the XR team that we sort of um, uh, got together. And I think they are going to be really helpful. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm just going to continue with that. My personal interest in VR is like zero. Like I don't have, personally, I don't use VR. I don't watch VR movies. I don't play VR games. I've never watched a millisecond of VR porn, believe me. And like, I just don't care for VR, really. <laughs> At, for myself, but I do still think like this is, an, as I'm interested in usability aspects, I'm interested in um, this kind of technology, it opens a lot of, lots of new doors for, for the workflow. And if you speak to the artists that have done experiments with VR, they are so enthusiastic about having VR in Blender. Like, there's so much you can do. And I think we can talk about that in a bit. Okay, this is the OpenXR introduction. There's not much new for you guys here. Um, just a bit of you know, all of this, this graphics, I guess, and everything. Blah, 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 blah. Nothing new for you. The last point is maybe a bit important, like when there is GPL two or later. Um, so for us, it was never really an option to use like the proprietary um, uh, runtimes. And this allows us now to actually use the best runtimes or the runtimes people have installed on their system. And it's just plug and go. And this is, of course, what Blender users want to have. Yeah, those are the two proprietary ones that are out there for OpenXR. I guess you all, got, you all know about that. And of course, there's Monado. Um, I'm personally a sort of free software enthusiast. Like, I do believe in the values of free software, free as in freedom, of course. But yeah, so I really hope Monado is going to to have a really great future. Of course, right now it's not there yet. Like it does have issues, and I wouldn't, I never suggest people to try Monado because it's a hassle to set up. Like for art, for our users especially, like for developers, it's fine if they want to test it. But yeah, it's just a hassle to set up, and it misses so many. F it's missing so many features. But I'm, I really hope Monado is going to do well in the future. So, yeah. Basically, too long didn't read. For Blender, this is the way to get state-of-the-art VR or XR technology in a, device, in a device, software, and platform-independent way. But of course, you all know that. So let's talk about my GSOC project, Google Summer of Course. Um, the name of it was Core Support for Virtual Reality Headsets through OpenXR. And it's really core support, like meaning two things. It's in the source code of Blender, of course. It's C code, not some Python add-on. People have been doing Python add-ons for that stuff. Um, but this is in the source code. But it's also really limited on the core fundamentals, fundamentals of um, XR for now. Um, we are going to go into a little bit more detail right now. The idea was from the get-go to, get to focus on solid and well-performing VR viewport rendering support. That means we didn't want to, well, we want, but we ignored stuff like um, like uh, um, controllers and everything. We didn't start to think about how our tools gonna work in VR, how are you gonna navigate in VR, how do you set up all your settings, how do you set up the reference space, and all that kind of stuff. We put that aside and focused on, well, for this project, for, the, for my Google Sum of Code project, I focused on the viewport rendering part of it. Intentionally so. Um, I didn't want to do much work on the Blender viewport itself because that is a big project too. Um, with the 2.8 project, there are so many things that have improved in the viewport and with, with the architecture, which made my life so much more easy. Um, and there are some extra abstractions in place which should, have, which should really help us further develop stuff and do really uh, performance improvements like single pass drawing and everything. Um, so yeah, and we are on a good track there too. Uh, I'm happy about that. This does have some implications. Um, of course, I have to start develop like uh, an, initial, an initial architecture for um, all the OpenXR stuff in Blender. Um, and uh, this, this is a topic that I 
do care about architecture in general. So this had to work. So I put a lot of effort into that. Also, error handling. Um, I don't want, or if there is some error happening on the VR side, like say OpenXR doesn't find the device, or um, there's some, um, okay, not necessarily wrong API use because that's a bug and that's not something that we should expose as an error. But anyway, if anything bad happens, I really want that we fail gracefully, we just exit the VR session, we don't try to restore anything or so, we just exit the VR session and leave the rest of Blender untouched and make sure it keeps working. Um, of course this has limits, like we can't deal with, if the driver crashes, we can't do anything about that. Um, yeah, and I was really trying to avoid any VR specific drawing overhead. Um, I can show you, or we could get a bit more into that in a second or actually now, um, we have, what we have now I think is pretty well performing VR rendering. Um, of course this is always like, this is not a really scientific uh, statement or so, but I've, I am personally quite happy with it now. We have reasonably complex scenes with a uh, few million triangles and they run at around 16 to, 60 to 100 FPS easily on decent machines, so it's I think that's pretty fine. Of course, we still have the, um, the OpenXR runtime throttling the speed for the device refresh rate and all that stuff, but in theory, we could do reasonably complex, we can do reasonably com complex scenes with around 100 F FPIs, um, uh, FPS, I'm sorry. Uh, and yeah, I'm quite satisfied with that. Of course, there, we are using the OpenXR SDK loader uh, to connect to the Open SDK, OpenXR SDK runtime. That's better. So, um, I think this is actually a useful thing because it really is an OS wide way to uh, set an active runtime. Um, so, I think this is actually not such an unimportant uh, deliverable. deliverable. Um, and then for the initial patch, I'm, I added an add-on so we can hide the VR stuff from the UI for now because it is really limited and really focused on getting the viewport rendering to work and it, it's just going to be sort of disappointing if users find out that or find the VR button and they click it and it's not doing that much other than just showing the viewport and VR if the OpenXR stuff is set up on the system. So, yeah, we want to develop things a bit further before we actually activate this stuff by default. And that's pretty much what I said earlier about the error handling strategy. We want to fail gracefully with a useful error message, message actually. That's another important thing, the important thing, and yeah, no side effects. Of course, yeah, I'm on a FOSS conference, so you probably don't care too much about that, but we want Blender, or we want capability or support for the Windows Mixed Reality Portal 2, of course, and this one all only supports DirectX. It was also my main development platform for this project, um, because I had a Windows Mixed Reality HMD, um, so yeah, I had to work on getting DirectX support and this is using some um, WGL extensions and I was having some issues but turns out that OS VR is, is actually doing the exact same thing um, and I can just steal code from them. So this is cool. Of course I added all kinds of debugging utilities like enabled the OpenXR extension for debugging. Um, and did kind of some uh, command line comments for uh, commands for Blender and everything. Um, and of course the architecture stuff. Um, so I added this, those initial abstractions. Maybe if we have time, we can look at the code briefly at the end. Um, all in all, I'm quite satisfied with the project outcome. Um, of course, there are always things that you want to address and that you want to improve. Um, and I'm also pretty picky about many things, but all in all, I'm actually quite happy with how it came out. Um, 
So I'm looking forward to seeing it in, in Blender Master and seeing people actually starting using it. Of course, those are, those are some screenshots. The Mixed Reality Portal, which is, I guess, the most major openings are uh, portal right now. Um, I know you, you guys don't care too much for it, but that's what Blender users want to see, that kind of stuff. And the Oculus Run Challenge is working too. Uh, I don't have a screenshot of Monado, <laughs> unfortunately, because I got it to run on my machine in the uh, Blender Institute, and I made some screenshot actually, sh screenshots actually for the, the meetings there and the weeklies there, but I only had them in the network there, and now I came, I was actually traveling last week and came to the, to the office and my screen was stolen because they had to bring them to the Blender conference and everything, so I did manage to uh, get a screenshot of it, which is kind of sad. So, um, we can have a, let's quickly go to the perch. I can connect to the internet. There we go. That's my sign to drink something. Oh, by the way, excuse me for using Windows. I was just trying to, I, I always, I only use Linux except for if I have to develop something for Windows, and I had to, unfortunately it didn't detect the other display, so I had no choice right now to, other than starting Windows. But I am, I'm using LibreOffice as, Office at least, so I'm not going totally crazy here. Um, so basically this is the patch and it has um, quite some information, and if somebody's interested in checking it out, um, is Jakob actually here? There you are. Still have to respond to your post. Um, so this is the patch. What else do we have? Um, this is my final Google Summer of Code report. There's quite a lot of information on there, um, with a little overview and then some more in-depth information about all the features and everything. And of course, a little demo video. And again, it's using the Windows Mixed Reality platform because that's what worked <laughs> for me. Um, actually, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just have to enable the add-on, of course, that hides the button from the UI. Then you toggle the VR session, and it works. Um, I mean, this isn't too fancy for you guys, I think. Um, you're all used to this. But you can see this is a scene with uh, almost three million triangles and it's pretty smooth. And of course there's uh, like um, time wrapping going on and reprojection, but still it's doing pretty well actually. I'm quite happy with that. You can find it on my Twitter account if you want to watch it again. Let's briefly talk about the XR team. Um, again, this is totally unofficial and this is not like super close team or so, like we're just a couple of people and we try to connect and get stuff done for Blender. I'm calling it XR team here and VR team here. Well done. Dalai Falinto is sort of the uh, project or one of the main managers um, in Blender for the Blender development team. Um, he's been doing lots of work with VR. Um, his day job used to be uh, lots of VR work, and I think he's still doing like one day a week on VR projects. Daniel Martinez Lara, he is a super awesome guy. This is supposed to be a link actually. So, let me Google stuff. Or DuckDuckGo stuff, of course. This is Project MPX, which is by Daniel uh, Martinez Lara. And he's just a super awesome guy. He does lots of 2D drawing in Blender. So this is something that people really loved about the newer versions of Blender, that you can basically use the 3D world and paint 2D paintings in it and use the depth and everything to get those awesome results. Um, this is kind of the work he does in there. Um, and of course there's some VR stuff. And he has been doing lots of um, experiments with VR together with his own little team. Um, and this is just super awesome stuff. I think this, this runs through an, through an add-on or so. Um, 
but he's really enthusiastic about having we are in Blender because you can do so much more stuff and it's, it's such a different way of working. Which is not to say that, or we don't expect that people are just gonna use we are all the time, like there's still the issues with heavy HMDs and everything, but it's something that really complements people's workflows and you can just switch back and forth between mice and keyboards and uh, and pen, like drawing pens, and the VR displays. So this is, he's doing amazing stuff. There's also uh, Jamar, who was supposed to be at the conference today. He was a bit late, so I didn't get to see him yet, and I never met him. Um, he's been doing concept arts for huge uh, productions like Jurassic World, um, uh, or um, Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and he's been recently trying to use Blender more, more and more in that. I think all this work in Jurassic World was actually done in Blender, the concept art. Um, so let's look his name up. There we go. And he's also really, really into the idea of doing this kind of stuff in VR, this kind of painting and drawing. Um, so yeah, those are some of the projects he worked on. Um, yeah, so that's another cool guy to have on the team. Uh, okay, that one, that's just me. Max Griechenbauer, he did also, maybe you might actually know him, he's been doing some plugins for Maya and um, Max, I think. And he's also been, it's not him, it's his team, he's working for or he's the CEO of um, a company called Marui Plugin, and they've been doing a project called Blender XR. Okay, and I think you can see in the background or so, so I don't have to, yeah. Um, so it's basically also, um, actually a, a C, implement, C and C++ implementation to have VR capabilities and VR tools inside Blender. Um, and this is a really cool project. We are probably not going to do this, the same kind of workflow that they went for, um, but I'm really happy to have him and the company on board to help us develop tools. So yeah, they're doing cool stuff. And imagine like this kind of set dressing or uh, layout stuff that's so easy to do in VR. And one of the main use cases we're looking into is, say you're working on an animation movie and the director comes in and they just want to work through the set basically and re rearrange stuff on the fly. And for them, this is going to be totally useful. Like just put on the glasses and re rearrange stuff and maybe we can add some AR capabilities to it and they can actually talk to um, the colleagues and everything. Like. There's lots of potential in there. Um, Sebastian Koenig, a German guy, I know him for a long time, and, and he's been around in the Blender community for since forever. And he's also doing with his company, BlendFX, lots of uh, commercial VR work, or lots of um, professional industry VR work. So for him, or for them, it's a lot about the pipeline, so you can, for them, they need a preview of their work in Blender, then they're gonna, gonna export it to Unity usually, um, and for them, the transition between the packages has to be really smooth, so the whole pipeline thing is a huge topic in the animation industry. Um, I knew it. So, um, this also matters for we are. Okay, where are we? Um, as I said, this is an unofficial team, so um, there might still be some people joining and this is, everybody can help out, of course, it's open source, that's how we develop stuff and uh, all this stuff is, or most of the stuff is public, we have some private email threads that I want to copy over into the uh, public threads, um, I'm going to do this, that soon. If we look at further work for We Are Blender, I have some thoughts on this. On this, um, because we don't just want to sort of take the existing Blender UI and throw it into VR in one way or another. Um, 
we have sort of the lead designer for 2.8 and 2.5. He once said um, that if we do this, we are just going to be a more difficult way of using Blender, and we don't want that to happen. Like we really want to get the potential of we are and get all those new workflows to work um, in Blender. So we are kind of thinking about designing a XR UI from scratch and not taking what's already there in Blender and really thinking about uh, fresh ways of, of uh, implementing interaction modes. But this one is a really important one for me. This should be use case focused. Like we don't just start adding all kinds of tools and don't think about how are people going to use this. We actually do want to start with okay, what are the use cases for we are in Blender? Sculpting, um, set dressing, or the director that works around and just tells everybody where he wants to have his stuff and adds annotations in the 3D space and everything. So we are. We already start, we had a meeting today on VR, um, just like a few hours ago, and we came up with the first use cases that we want to work on, and that's probably where the next steps are going to uh, be focused on. But there's still this thing about consistency and interoperability. Like I said earlier, you users want to be able to take off the HMD and start using their pen tablet or start using keyboard and mouse and then go back to the HMD and back and forth. So there has to be this consistency and um, interoperability for this kind of stuff to work. And this is a bit of a challenge to get everything combined, like this com consistency and the don't just take the UI and put it into VR. Um, but I actually think this is an interesting uh, this sets interesting borders for the project, um, and I think that's a good path to go through. This is sort of the main task, oh, not word, um, the main design task for everything virtual reality related, like the highest level task um, on developer.org, which is obviously our uh, development platform, and there are the subtasks linked to it. This one is probably the most interesting one because it has all the open questions or some of the more important open questions that we have to figure out early enough um, before we get into more details. And yeah, it has all that interesting stuff. So if you want to learn more about the actual development process or how we are actually working on we are in Blender, that's sort of the place you would probably want to go. That's this for the. That's it for the presentation part of this. Um, okay, we have like uh, no minutes left, like s negative seventeen minutes left. No, um, I think we can do one or two questions. I'll, then I have to run back to the conference and have my meetings there. Have questions, All right. Yeah. Well, you guys have time, but I don't have time. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, let's just do one or two questions. Yeah. Standard swap. Uh, hi. Uh, do you have idea how new? Uh, XR UI should be or could be looks? <laughs> How it could be or should be, but like from the design side or from the implementation side of it? Uh, no, looks, the design, like did you see the uh, some game or s some VR application which yeah, is very course, cool yeah. for you? Yeah, of course, we, we looked at reference and it's not like we're sort of totally um, trying to come up with stuff without any idea of what other apps do and everything. and. Especially the other guys have a good idea of uh, the stuff. Um, yeah, so I guess for me, I don't see my role in the actual design part of the tools and everything. I'm more focused on getting the foundations and the frameworks in place to develop tools, to um, 
to um, make sure that the, everything is extendable via the Python API. We were just talking um, part of the meeting where two part of the meeting we just had where two developers from Ubisoft and they are uh, partially switching to Blender, and they are also really interested in having the VR stuff work well, um, and they really want to have like an extensible. Um, Python or really useful Python API to build their own workflows in VR. Um, so yeah, this is one of the things uh, that's important. Um, yeah, but I really, I think my role will kind of fade away as things go on. Um, I hope to put the framework in place and make sure that everything sort of goes into the right direction at the start and that we do actually work on like, figure out the use cases first and don't just start implementing random stuff. Um, but then, as all the foundations are in place, I think my role will fade away and other people, or the, especially part of the, the, the team, um, can implement the tools and do all the useful stuff, the fancy eye candy stuff and everything. Um, so I, I had a kind of hate-love relationship with Blender in VR. Like I started VR and I'm like, wow, I need to do everything in VR. And then I did workshops in Blender and I was like, wow, I can do everything in Blender. And there were so many menus, menus and everything that it would make no sense to bring that to VR, just yeah. too many. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering what's the best strategy for this? Like you mentioned focusing on specific workflows. Um, should it be sculpting first? Like what would be the easier, faster, biggest impact to, to start with your in Blender as a workflow? Yeah, one of the things that I'm always afraid of is um, in Blender development or UI development in general, but it's also especially for the VR stuff, um, there's the saying, uh, the jack of all trades, but the master of none, like I don't really want to go there. Uh, so especially for the VR stuff, I think this use case stuff is really important. And of course, um, some of the first ones is uh, to look at is sculpting because that's sort of a low hanging fruit. We just need the controllers to work, we need the picking to work, and everything. Um, but then we don't need any more, and you need to select the tools. Uh, but then you can just interact with the object directly. But then there are other stuff where you need like those 3D gizmos and or widgets, however you want to call them, in 3D space, and you really want to use that kind of stuff. Um, so to develop some of those gizmos, there's uh, I guess for the use case where the director wants to walk in and arrange the set and everything, that's also one of the first ones we are going to look at and we need the gizmos for that and some other special tools. Um, so those are two of the, of the use cases. Um, then of course another one is painting in 3D, the stuff that Daniel uh, Martinez Lara does. Um, so yeah, we, I think we have two more use cases that we settled on f to start with, but yeah, this is just stuff we discussed today and we just have to put it online and start working them out and flesh them out. So yeah, those, those are the kind of things that, things that we want to start on. All right, I think it's time to wrap it up. I have to run. Thank you very much and have a good rest of the day. See you.